the idea is that um, you've got many instructors, don't want a Zoom account per, per instructor, but also you, you can't get away with just one Zoom account because Zoom won't let you teach or it won't let you conduct a, two meetings at the same time on the same account. So how do we do it? Well, the way we do it is the same way we do rooms. Um, and so if I show you, for instance, yesterday, uh, this is today and this is yesterday. Yes, I'm going to yesterday. My draw that seems so far away. <laughs> okay, so if I just go to yesterday, right? The way we do it is we have Zoom one, Zoom two, Zoom three for three accounts. And, and the way you determine how many uh, Zoom accounts you should connect is you just look at the busiest time you have and what is the maximum amount of classes you're going to conduct at the same time. Right. So if you say at any point in time uh, across all our locations, we're going to do up to five classes at the same time, then you would get, and if you wanted to do them all on online with Zoom, then you would get five, five Zoom accounts. If it's three, then it's three Zoom accounts. And each Zoom account is represented by a resource here in, in MindBody, Zoom Room. So Zoom one, Zoom two, Zoom three. Okay. Cool. The reason I'm showing you this is because that's how you would just kind of organize which Zoom account gets which class, right? Gotcha. Okay, so, so then how do we do it? Well, we thought, what is the simplest way to decide what a class, when a class should be a Zoom class or when a class shouldn't be? And, and often, you know, a, a lot of folks, what they do is that they, ha they already have a lot of classes scheduled and, and some of them may not be Zoom, they may just can't decide to cancel it. For instance, if it's a class that requires equipment and you can't do it in Zoom, you may just cancel that one. If you feel that you can convert it, then you may not cancel it. And then the other challenge too was some of the cl classes, a lot of them are already booked. You already have people in them before they become a Zoom meeting. So how do you deal with all of that? So the way we do it is uh, we created, or and, and you would have to do the same, you create a, an account called Zoom Meeting. Very simple. And it's just a profile on each one of your sites, right? And we call it our Zoom guy, but we can call it Zoom gal, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and, and the only requirement for this person or this, this profile, there actually there's two requirements. One would be that the ID is Zoom, right? So you can change the ID and you just name it just Zoom. And then the second one is that um, just for, for the sake of having access without doing billing, whatever, give it a, a, a Zoom unlimited you know, plan where they can do whatever they want, wherever they want without paying. Right? Sure, gotcha. Right? So, so then once that's done, so once you have a Zoom person and then you have Zoom rooms, you're really ready to take these classes to, to Zoom. And the way you do it, and I'll show you the automation too, because you're pretty familiar with that now. So I'll show you what they look like. All right, so um, I'm gonna go to MindBody and <clears throat> classes and Zoom meetings. And it's basically all these, these automations that run in the background. So the way it works is this way. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna say, zoom to, um, let's look at today. And I'll show you here. And by the way, sometime when I do, also I tell people, if you wanna make it easier, you can create a custom property in Zoom, call it the MBO Zoom Room, right? Oh, gotcha. Right, and then you can see Zoom one, Zoom two, Zoom three. So these are the- Got it. Right? Oh, cool, that's nice. Right, so that makes it kind of easier to know which one's what. So, um, so right here, let's go to Zoom two and let's look at meetings, upcoming meetings, right? And sh she has no upcoming meetings, no upcoming class. So how would that happen? Well, it would be very simple. You would, um, you would just um, look at a class. So today is uh, Wednesday the first right here okay so let's take a class and then here you can 
let's just take a, a class in the future. So we'll take uh, uh, we'll take two p.m. No, that's not future. Let's take one tomorrow. I just don't want to create one. Too lazy. Um, <laughs> Let's just do two more. All right. So four aerobics, virtual toning and strength at 4 p.m. tomorrow. There's no one in the class. And it's in a weights room, right? Because this this person, let's say I'm someone who's just getting started with Zoom now, right? So the okay. first thing I would have to do is, is make sure that this person goes into a Zoom room. So I'm going to change the room to Zoom 2. And then you, for all your classes, you can predetermine which room, they, which Zoom they go to, right? And it'll it'll tell you if there's a conflict. Now you know how to use that. Uh, sure. Probably a lot better than I do. <laughs> um, okay. So now I'll go back to classes. So let's go again. Look at tomorrow. Aerobics. So now we're in Zoom two, right? So I'm going to go to that class, and there's no one in there, right? So still nothing here. So let's say people are signing up for it, right? Before you turn it into a Zoom room. So I'm just gonna do a test client. So I'll put a couple people in there. And, and these people obviously are added whichever way. It doesn't really matter to the app or whatever. It, what we recommend is call your class virtual because then they know what they're signing up for. Uh, oh, sure, yeah. yeah. So I think you already know that. And I think my body actually uh, communicated that to everybody too. Yeah, they. I think that's how that's how they've been telling their consumers to search too. I think so. That's right. Which is great, right? So yeah. All right. So I'm gonna put. Uh, I'm putting uh, four people in there, right? Four people in there, still not here. So now I want this to be a Zoom class. So all you need to do is you add that, our little Zoom gal. And I'll just refresh here, and now it should be a room. A moment, right here. So now you have virtual toning strength, 4 p.m. And everything is set, and all these people are registrants, and they all got. That's crazy. Email. How does that work? Like, how come that guy? How come adding the Zoom guy triggers that to sync? That's so crazy. He has a little magician hat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show That's you how really... it works. It's pretty cool. It's this guy oh right my here. Gosh. So. So right here, create a meeting in Zoom. So right here, this automation says, if there's a new class booking, right? And it equals Zoom, it triggers the whole automation. Oh. It goes and gets the class, converts all the dates, checks to see if the class already exists or not. And then it creates the class. And then it goes back to MindBody, grabs all of the people who are booked in the class and add them to the, to the, to the Zoom room. So, so it's pretty cool. Now, the, the cool thing about it too is that, so you've got four people now, right? Chloe, Liam, Ian, and James. Yep. The cool thing is even if Zoom has already been added and people sign up after that, so let's say we, this is a class for, what is it, a couple of days from now, people still sign up for it, right? So as people sign up, now that class is a Zoom class. So I'll add uh, Sally. And then I can come here and I'll refresh and I'll see that Sally was added now. So right here. So Sally's here now. Awesome. So it, it really, and it really just kind of keeps that sync now. Now it does a couple of things that are also pretty interesting is right now, and, and you can customize this any way you want, but right now we have it. So uh, the email contact is the, the, um, uh, the instructor, Henry, right here. You don't have to do that, but just to show you if, if that was important to you that people can reach out to the instructor because that's how we show who's, who's teaching it. Um, that is also changeable. So if I come here and I go to um, my little Zoom class here, no, I forgot which day it is, right here. Right here, right? So this is the aerobics 4 p.m. And I change Henry to uh, Horton. That gets changed. Uh, takes a second. Didn't change. Did I change it? Uh, yep. Right here, Matt Horton. 
now oh, is, cool. is the new person. And, and then the other couple things that are really cool about it is it also handles cancellations. So if, um, if I go back to, to this class, and now we're, let's say last minute, Chloe can make it, right? She's canceling. I'm gonna take Chloe out. And now Chloe should be gone. So I go to registration. And, and she's gonna get, so Chloe's now gone. And she's also gonna get an email from Zoom saying, you, you're, you're not part of this meeting anymore. You're, you're not, right, just don't try because you've been canceled. And if, if it was a mistake, you can always add her back, whatever. And then finally, uh, one of my favorite parts, because a lot of people are just scrambling to make things happen right now and it's a little confusing. This is a virtual toning and strength class, right? If you change the, the spot, because you can change the slot, right? You can actually come here. Not many people do this, but you can come here and you can, um, right here, and you can change, uh, edit the class setup and change that from a toning strength one to a toning strength two, power, for example, it will update the meeting. But if you change the room, right? So let's say you, for a reason or another, the room is already taken, somebody else is gonna log in that room. If you change that room, watch what happens. This is really pretty powerful stuff. If I go to Zoom one, or let's just do Zoom, let's do Zoom one, because Zoom three is one of our developers and it keeps on logging in and out, so. <laughs> So I'll do zoom one, right? So now I change the room to zoom one. What's gonna happen? Uh, April 2nd, right here, right? So it's now zoom one. If I do a refresh of class, it's not gonna be there anymore, right? It's gone. But if I go back to my rooms, and I go to user management and I look at Zoom one. It's been moved. Meetings, upcoming. It's been moved to a different account, a different Zoom account, and it brought all of the registrants over. Awesome. So then, and all the registrants get like a confirmation email with like a link to join the Zoom and everything as soon as they're moved around, right? That's right. So in this particular case, it will send them a new email with a new link. And all gotcha. these links, by the way, so, so the way we have it here, so you see, then create a, a meeting in Zoom. We, it's very important, it was very important to the people who needed that, well, people who told us they needed that, to make sure that only people who had access had, could log in, right? So in here, you'll notice we generate a password. Here we generate a password. So I'll show you what it looks like live here. So this is the way it worked, right? So uh, this one right here, what happened is Zoom was added here, and then here it generated a random password. This was a password, and it added the password to the Zoom meeting. And so when they get their email, they get a link, and in that link, the, the password is embedded. So all you have to do is click on it, and only them can get in. And also on top of that, it checks to make sure they're registered. So if they're not registered, they can't get in. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Pretty cool, this is huh? so cool. Yeah, I can't believe you guys built this so quickly. This is really impressive. <laughs> we, we built it. We, we started on Saturday and we had a beta on Monday. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. This is super exciting because this is just like everything that I was hoping to do next. So we're excited. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, so that's how it works. We're pretty proud of it. Um, and um, and I, hopefully it'll help a lot of people. You know, I mean, we, we 